Jamal Crawford, Lou Williams, Jordan Clarkson, eat your hearts out. Because there's a new bench captain in town, and his name is Six Low. <laughs> Who's in charge here? No. So Six Low and the Lost Bench Boys, let's go! So obviously today I wanted to more in-depthly talk about D'Angelo Russell's shift to the bench for the Lakers as their new six man, and I'll just get right out ahead of things and say that I actually kind of like it, and I'm actually kind of talking myself more and more into it the further along we go, especially as I continue to heavily push this Rufio and the Lost Boys motif and propaganda. Shout out Dante Basco. Ui, Filipino! Um, but yeah, seeing D'Angelo Russell embrace this new bench role and respond to it so well, and seeing the team respond to it relatively well as well, it makes me embrace this notion more and more too. So since moving to the bench, it's just been two games, but D'Angelo Russell is averaging 16.5 points on 50% from the field in just 26 minutes per game. On the season before these two games, he was only averaging like 12 points a game on like 38% from the field. So in just these two games alone, you already see the stark difference in not only his points jump, but his efficiency spike as well. D'Angelo Russell is also a combined plus 31 in both of these games, plus 18 versus the Raptors, which was second highest on the team last night behind just Jackson Hayes, and then plus 13 versus the Philadelphia 76ers, which was the third highest that night. And the lineups that he's been in have largely thrived and been part of some of the Lakers' biggest runs in the last two games. Now, let's just talk about the most obvious positive impact this shift has had on the Lakers team, and it would be D'Angelo Russell's effects on the Lakers bench, because thanks to D'Angelo Russell's efficient, quick-hitting offensive output the last two games, the Lakers bench has now scored 40 points and 32 points, and is now averaging 36 points per game in their last two games with six low at the helm. That average points per game would place them at number 11 on the season in terms of NBA bench points per game, whereas just a few games ago, the Lakers were literally dead last in bench scoring in the league. So in the most literal sense possible, moving D'Angelo Russell's typical 16 to 18 points per game output and putting that onto the bench has naturally risen the Lakers bench output in scoring and points per game, but I do think his effects on the bench and his impact on the team at large goes well beyond the statistical numbers. So this obviously isn't anything groundbreaking and many people have already pointed this out, but one of the biggest things that D'Angelo Russell's move to the bench has done is it has unlocked Austin Reeves offensively because now Austin Reeves can, with Cam Reddish starting next to him, Austin Reeves can finally save his legs defensively a little bit and be positioned to guard the lesser perimeter threat on the opposing team while Cam Reddish guards the more potent offensive player. And I really think that this will help save Austin Reeves' legs for the offensive end of the floor, and we've already seen it in the last two games where he's been both very efficient from the field and been able to hit his three-point shots, but he's also turned the ball over less and looked less sloppy as well. In the Toronto Raptors game, Austin Reeves had six assists and zero turnovers, and overall, you just saw much more life and juice in Austin Reeves throughout the game, or much more sustained life and juice in Austin Reeves' legs. Now Austin Reeves can be more of that primary I'm him potent offensive player that so many fans want him to be and actually live up to that standard. Now on the other side of the spectrum, while this move does unlock Austin Reeves, I also think that it kind of unlocks D'Angelo Russell as well. D'Lo can kind of cook more. And if you've been following this channel and been listening to my podcast, you would know that I've been clamoring for D'Angelo Russell to get more usage, get more on-ball reps, because at one point in this season, through the first week or so, D'Angelo Russell's usage had actually dipped to career low levels of usage at around 16%. After the first four or five games, Rui Hachimura actually had a higher usage rate than D'Angelo Russell. And against the Sixers, the first game that D'Angelo Russell came off the bench, D'Lo had the second highest usage percentage on the team on the night, with a 27.8% usage, just behind Anthony Davis. 
And then against Toronto, D'Angelo Russell had a 24% usage, which was third on the team behind just Austin Reeves and LeBron James, who had a 27.4 and 26.8% usage, respectively. So by putting D'Lo on the bench and allowing him to have more of this usage, we get better balance altogether from three of our best primary initiators. So when your three best ball handlers and creators are now each getting 24% usage or higher, that is much better balance than whatever the heck was going on at the beginning of the year. When LeBron had his typical 24 plus percent usage, Austin had a 21 to 22 percent usage, and D'Angelo Russell was down to a career low 16 percent usage. With D'Angelo Russell off the bench, all three guys now have a 24 plus percent usage, and that's all been by design. In the last two games that D'Angelo Russell has been coming off the bench, he's either been subbing in for LeBron James or Austin Reeves, during the Philadelphia 76ers game, he was given time with just Anthony Davis alongside Gabe Vincent and I forget who else. But D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis were able to continue milking their Rondo-like synergy and connection with one another in that unit. And last night versus the Toronto Raptors, D'Angelo Russell came in for LeBron James. So even in that new rotation, D'Angelo Russell was still able to milk his chemistry with Austin Reeves as well because he was with Austin Reeves and Anthony Davis. But regardless of who he's been coming in for, I think JJ Redick's directive for D'Angelo Russell has been very clear. Grab the rock, use this screen, and cook. So yeah, when D'Lo comes in off of the bench now, Redick has been deliberately putting the ball into his hands and allowing D'Angelo Russell to run more high pick and roll screens and stack actions where D'Angelo Russell can start to really get into a rhythm. If you remember that Milwaukee Bucks game last season where he had like 41 points and took over down the stretch, it was D'Angelo Russell in stack action navigating high pick and roll situations and just getting buckets for himself. And it's very clear in these first two games off the bench that Redick has simplified D'Angelo Russell's role and told him to do one thing get buckets again. And as a result, we've gotten a more offensively versatile D'Angelo Russell who isn't just one-dimensionally sitting out on the corners of the baseline or out on the wings waiting for a three-point shot to happen or moving all around off ball hoping that he's, he's going to get the ball off of a cut. Now we're seeing the D'Angelo Russell that we all know from his swaggier days as an all-star, where he is relentlessly driving more into the paint. We've even seen the re-emergence of mid-range assassin off the dribble D'Angelo. And yeah, D'Angelo Russell has just been a more versatile and dangerous offensive threat for the Lakers, which is what they really need coming off of the bench. So overall, I'm really glad that D'Angelo Russell has been taking to Redick's directive to just come in guns blazing and attack the rack be aggressive in hunting his own shot. While D'Angelo Russell's passing is a hugely underrated and valuable part of his game, right now the Lakers need D'Lo the scorer. Because when D'Lo's scoring in bunches, he makes the Lakers that much more dangerous and it keeps him fully engaged in every facet of the game for longer stretches of the game. And it also keeps defenses on their heels. So why is this working so far? Because last season, Darvin Ham also benched D'Angelo Russell in December. First off, I think this is working because JJ Redick actually has a very intentional plan with how he wants to utilize and deploy D'Angelo Russell. He's not benching D'Angelo Russell just to bench him because he's a bad defender, which I think was the primary reason Darvin Ham benched D'Angelo Russell. Darvin Ham benched him because he was quote unquote playing like shit or shitting the bed. And for JJ Redick, that's not the case. I think he actually wants D'Angelo Russell to help the bench out because he knows he can be a benefit to the bench. And in fact, I truly believe J.J. Redick when he says this is not a demotion. And most importantly, it seems like he has articulated that very clearly and empathetically to D'Angelo Russell, who so far has responded very well. The other thing that's very different from how Darwin handled D'Lo's benching to how J.J. Redick is currently handling D'Lo's benching is the fact that when Darvin Ham first benched D'Angelo Russell, he literally only played D'Lo two different shifts in the entire game. D'Lo would come in for one shift in the first half, and then one shift in the second half, thereby reducing his overall minutes to around 17 to 20 minutes per game. There were literally 
a stretch of games where D'Angelo Russell played less than 18 minutes in a game, which absolutely cannot happen on a team like the Lakers. But when you look at how J.J. Redick has been handling D'Angelo Russell's minutes and shifts, you can see that J.J. Redick is intentionally making sure that D'Angelo Russell comes in for at least four different shifts in the entirety of the game. He comes in twice in the first half and twice in the second half so that D'Angelo Russell can not only be staggered with some of the bench units, but still be staggered with the OG starting lineup at times as well. As we saw to close the first half of the Raptors game, he was with Cam Reddish, Austin Reeves, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. Whereas Darvin Ham literally treated D'Angelo Russell like a bench player after he benched him, I feel like J.J. Redick is treating D'Angelo Russell more like one of his best players who he's asking to come off the bench to help better balance the rest of the team. And obviously you also have to give major props to D'Angelo Russell for buying in and sacrificing. He mentioned after the Sixers game that he only wants to win and he wants to do whatever it takes to do that. He left all his baggage at the door and at the feet of the last coaching staff. He's not moping, he's not playing victim, and this is all you can really ask for from a very skilled and talented player like D'Angelo Russell who has achieved many accolades throughout his NBA career in spite of how unfairly maligned he's been by all sorts of different fan bases throughout his career as well. But yeah, I think the biggest difference here is that D'Angelo Russell also just respects his current coach and doesn't hate his guts like he did the last one. Now, D'Angelo Russell is under a contract year. There is no player option on the other side of this, so he kind of has to play nice in order to extend his NBA career. But I also kind of just do believe him when he says he wants to do whatever it takes to win, and he does trust J.J. Redick, and I also believe that J.J. Redick has done a much better job leveling with his players and articulating things clearly so that it makes sense to them on a very intuitive level. And so... Yeah, I think the synergy and connection with D'Angelo Russell and J.J. Redick thus far is one of the main reasons why this has quote-unquote worked. So here is where I'll end my thoughts on this particular subject. I will admit to being slow to come around to the six-man D'Lo off the bench experiment, but I'll also now admit that I kind of like how it's going. Having said that, I would also like to remind everyone that it's just been two games. It's very early. It has quote-unquote worked against two very bad injury-depleted teams, and within stretches of both of these games, the Lakers have still looked pretty clunky and haven't been as in control as they should have been versus, again, two undermanned bad teams in the Sixers and Raptors. But the biggest thing I'll say outside of it's early, the biggest thing that I want to say is, even if you want to continue bringing D'Angelo Russell off the bench moving forward, I think J.J. Redick still needs to make sure that D'Angelo Russell's at least playing 28 minutes per game. I think this team is so deplete right now of any actual talent and depth that I don't think there's any world where guys like Cam Reddish and Rui Hachimura should consistently be playing more minutes than D'Angelo Russell in the long run. Now, situationally and based on how the flow of a particular game is going, sure, there may be some games in which Rui Hachimura or Cam Reddish play more minutes than D'Lo here and there, like the last two games, but on the whole, I strongly feel like D'Angelo Russell still needs to be playing 28 to 30 minutes per game a night, even if he's coming off of the bench. Now, given the context of the last two games versus the Sixers and the Raptors, I think his minutes were fine, given the competition and the fact that the Lakers were eventually able to build double digits on both teams and eventually blow the game wide open. And also, Gabe Vincent was sort of cooking defensively on Emmanuel quickly. But against more competitive teams, I think the Lakers will need to turn to D'Angelo Russell's ability to give them more offensive punch and playmaking balance off of the bench. And while Jared Vanderbilt and Christian Wood are out, I will continue to maintain that the Lakers' best defense is a better offense and more balance on that side of the floor. 
And you get better offense and better balance offensively when you have D'Angelo Russell on the floor. You make more shots. There are better passes going on. There's better ball handling. You turn the ball over less. You get less long miss shots that turn into leakouts on the other end for bad transition opportunities by the opposing team. And so that is the primary reason why I still push for, even with D'Angelo Russell coming off the bench, J.J. Redick finding ways to make sure that D'Angelo Russell is still playing at least 28 to 30 minutes a game. He can stagger this accordingly. He did so at the start of the season. So that would be my only minor pushback and caveat to this six-man D'Lo off the bench experiment. The other reason why I'm pushing to maintain D'Lo's starter level minutes is because I want to give him free reign to not only be a scorer, but to also find his rhythm as a playmaker. I don't want to lose that playmaking point god Rondo-like vision of D'Angelo Russell's in favor of him just being a microwave scorer off the bench. But if you constrain his minutes to just 20 to 25 minutes, then yeah, D'Angelo Russell is just going to be a bench scorer. But if you still give him his 28 to 30 minutes a night, then I think he has more space and free reign to do both things. And again, I think the Lakers are much better off for it if they allow D'Angelo Russell to be point D'Lo here and there as well. So that is another reason why I'm pushing for J.J. Redick to give D'Angelo a longer leash when it comes to his overall minutes played per game. But yes, overall, I have actually been pleasantly surprised with the six low bench mob D'Lo experiment. And once Jared Vanderbilt and Christian Wood come back, if they ever come back and some guys are shifted around again, I think the Lakers bench mob under D'Angelo Russell could really find a rhythm and footing with one another and really start to cook teams. We kill pirates. And then from D'Angelo Russell's side of things, if he really commits hard to this, I could see him totally rebranding himself for the better as this next Lou Will times Rondo fusion, six man of the year candidate perennially, the type of player that Jamal Crawford became so famous for being by the end of his career and actually lauded for, I think D'Angelo Russell can hit that type of trajectory as well. And hey, the last time a Laker won the six man of the year award, that player just so happened to be a lefty with smooth vision too. So go get him, six low and the Lost Boys bench mob. Yee. All right, that'll do it for this rambling video. Thank you guys for watching. Please do me the favor of liking this video, commenting down below, and please hitting subscribe on this channel. And oh yes, please remember to check out some of my merch and apparel, Basketball Sickos apparel, and I really degaff apparel as well out on the site in the links below. This has been Jonathan Hernandez of the Lakers Legacy Podcasts, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.